Welcome to the BetUS Soccer Channel. I'm Flash and welcome back from the international break that does no one any favours unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, and for me, these friendlies are not necessary at all. Um, we are America's favourite sports book, so I'd like you to subscribe and also I'd like you to ring the bell, which means I'll notify you and you'll never miss any content again. And that can be Premier League, La Liga, Bundesliga and Serie A, as well as Europa League and Champions League. And we're closing in on Copa America and the Euro Champs. Whew. It's Premier League. It's match day 30. We always say around Easter, now we enter the running. Do not look ahead. Do not. If you like your odds, your props, your offers and your bonuses, then type in betustv.com forward slash odds. We're going to have records. The chat is going to be really, really important. And if you like this content, then please thumbs up. Let me introduce my two absolute wingmen. Uh, I was going to say stars, but I don't want to be giving them too much credit too early. Um, it's award-winning owner of We Love Betting in Marco Hare and father Brad Thomas. And not father if you're new to this show because he's in the priesthood. It's because <laughs> He is a father. Brad, how are you going? And by the way, I never know whether your top of your hair is white or it's the background. <laughs> it's white today. No, I'm doing good. I think actually next week you'll see a, a little bit of a different hairstyle. So just going to leave it at that. Oh, look at that. And there's double shows next week, by the way. So you can join us on Monday, 1 o'clock Eastern time when we go through the midweek card. Marco, here, you and I, old hat at this. Do not count your chickens. This running, you get above your station, you look too far ahead, and you could well find that banana skin underneath your feet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, business end of the season now, isn't it? It's uh, It's gone very, very fast, but it's hard to believe that there's, what, uh, eight games, ten games left of the Premier League season um, already, which is uh, remarkable, really. I can't believe we're in uh, we're at Easter and returning for April next week, and it's a busy period ahead. We've got midweek Premier League, as you say. There's also midweek Champions League, the, the two weeks following as well. So for the big teams, there's a lot of big games coming up. It's starting this weekend, actually, with the, a potential title decider as Man City host Arsenal. So very exciting times, but as you say, Flash, and as all the football managers will tell you around the world, you've got to take each game as it comes. Yep, the old cliche, but it's never more uh, so than now. Now it is so, so important. It's just 95 minutes. When you say title decider, it could be a title decider for one of the teams that are not even involved in that game. We're talking Man City and Arsenal. That will be at the end because that is on Sunday. Let's have a little look at the records because we're doing all right, boys. We're doing all right. 8.84 units of profit. Now pushing in. 20 units is our target. So uh, no pressure at all. Please get yourselves in the chat. Fernando, Mitch, nice to see you back. Jonathan Nelson, Daryl Turner. And uh, by the way, Jimmy Lee, nice to see your... Uh, uh, one of our Soccer Channel memberships as well. Foxy, there he is. Uh, listen, plenty of knowledge in that chat. So get you, I want to, uh, go, I've got six games. So I want to have a little uh, look and basically I want to get your predictions on score as well because if you think it's 2-1, then maybe you go with both teams scoring over. And if the line's at 2.5, then we'll just go straight over that as well. Remember, the Premier League has been pushing the Bundesliga for the top scoring league. Okay. Uh, let's kick off with the first game then, please. Sit on the fence if you want, and I wouldn't blame you. Forest host Palace. Forest at plus 125. Palace plus 230. Um, phew, the draw's at plus 234. Looks like a 1-1. One, one. Does someone get a second, though? Forest at plus 139. Marco, there. Very tight game this way. I would not want to go near the money line with your money. I think that's fair. Yeah, um, you said uh, looks like a one-one. I, I kind of agree there because um, for me, the the obvious play here is to back both teams to score. And I think whenever both teams to score is quoted around the minus one twenty mark in the Premier League these days, it has to be worth a second look. Um, Sixty-two yeah. percent of Premier League games this season have featured both teams scoring, uh, which implies kind of blanket odds on an average game around about the minus six one sixty mark. So. We're getting minus 118 for this match to be BTTS. And um, you know, that's already a big, big difference between what the Premier League average is hitting and the price we're being offered here. So for me, there's already a reason to get involved. But um, there's a second reason, which is probably the more important reason, which is uh, the market can be quite slow to adapt to managerial changes. And I think that's the case we have here because we have to start changing our mindset on Crystal Palace. They are no longer Roy Hodgson's team. They are no longer the arch pragmatists. 
Um, Oliver Arsenal is in charge now. He is uh, a much more expressive coach, will expect his Palace team to push forward and attack teams. So immediately there's a gear change between market expectations and what we know to be true. And I think it's also bolstered quite heavily as well by the raw data, which is very much in our favour here if you're back in both teams scoring. Palace have actually scored in 22 of 28 league games this season. Might surprise a few that it's been that high. They've actually scored in 12 or 14 away games as well, as well as 17 of the last 19 home or away in the Premier League. So they have a great knack of getting on the score sheet anyhow, but I think now with a forward-thinking head coach, um, they should be looking to kind of enhance those figures even further. Uh, and then Forrest, uh, I guess like Palace, involved in the, the relegation battle. Uh, the points deduction has put them very much in the mire at the minute. So they'll be desperate for positive results. They've scored in 10 of the last 12. At the City ground, they've scored in 11 of 14. However, they've recorded just two home clean sheets, which is the same tally as Palace have managed on their travels. So you look at the raw data. BTTS has hit in 9 of 14 Forest home games, 9 of 14 Palace away games. 9 of 14 is a 64% success rate and the league average is 62%. Throw in the managerial kind of curveball there with the, the managerial change at Palace and the, the sort of more adventurous approach for them and suddenly the, the BTS price which is implying uh, an op- uh, a percentage chance of just 54%. You know, any way you look at it, there's there's value to be had here on BTTS. So quite happy to back both teams to score. Don't care who wins as long as both sides oblige. Uh, and also there's a secondary bet I have in this fixture which is based around Abiri Eze, uh, Palace's uh, leading light in forward areas. Uh, you can back him to have over 1.5 shots and over 0.5 shots on target, around about minus 110. Um, now, he's had quite a disrupted campaign with injuries, but his numbers are absolutely exceptional. He's fit now. He will play the 90 minutes, you know, as long as he doesn't pick up another injury in this game. So he's had at least two shots in 16 of 18 league starts. He's on free kick duty, penalty duty. He's really, really accurate as well. In those 18 starts, he's had a shot on target on 15 occasions. Um, And Forrest, the last two home games, they've conceded 42 shots. Uh, And if you think Paris are going to be a lot more adventurous now under Glasner, surely Eze's figures will increase even further going forward because he is the real influence in forward areas uh, without Michael Elise on the field. So, yeah, quite like uh, both those two selections, BTDS and the Eze shot parlay. Yeah, and we say this every single time after an international break. Please line up, check, because honestly, the amount of times that a player will finish a game on a Tuesday, and obviously it's like four or five day break, but they do then get this phantom, oh, I'm a bit stiff, a bit tired, if they've had plenty of travelling. So just beware. Can't go near the money line. Do favour Palace to get something out of the game, though, Brad Thomas. Um, I like the way that Palace have been more on the front foot. Yeah, I think that both teams to score at minus 115 is just don't look any further. Yeah, um, it was an auto bet for me almost, and I hate saying that word, but Margot here touched on it. Managerial changes take a long time to reflect. Even player changes, even player fitness take a long time to reflect um, in, in most of football betting and mostly the Premier League. Um, we can even go and talk about when Nuno took over for, for us. Since his takeover, both teams to score has hit in nine of the 12 matches when he took over in December. Both teams to score hitting in two out of the three since Glasner took over. Um, I also want to touch on something that you said uh, um, that a lot of people probably don't realize. Eze, playing fully fit in his last match, had six shots. He played the full 90. With Eze on the pitch, it's a totally different for his team. Uh, a lot of that has to do with he can score from just about anywhere outside the Palace box. Team. The Palace team. Palace team, yes, yes. Um, yeah, don't start all that throwing yeah. in curve balls, you know what I mean? No, I've been no, away no. for 10 days. Especially with Elise <laughs> out. Um, it gives. It, I think that gives more free run um, for, for Eze here. I like the both teams to score. I think this match, regardless of how you look at it, is going to be a 1-1 starting point, right? Forrest, defensively, not great. Uh, Margot here touched on how many clean sheets two in in 14 at the city ground and they, I think they were pretty fortunate to get the the one over Villa they they bossed West Ham so yeah that's fine um, and then Palace so, I mean yeah Palace somehow find a way to to score a goal regardless if, it, if it's Roy Hodgson or it's Glass there now they're playing on the front foot a lot more so um, last point I want to make about this match uh, if you if you are brave I would ladder as a shots uh, he starts at over two and a half at minus 110. But if you go to three and a half, you can get plus 240, which is a pretty good price for him. And that's just shots. It doesn't matter if it just hits shots. the pie man, program seller, or top corner. Yep, just shots. Doesn't even need to hit the target. 
OK, let's have a little look at the official picks. Can't really uh, get involved in this game, even though I do think the 1-1 is the way to go. Uh, both seem to score minus 1-1-8 for both the lads at two units. Any uh, any double dip in there, though? Let's have a little look. Eze, over one and a half shots and over 0.5 shots on target. Coupled up at minus 110. If you go over to uh, betus.com, fourth one down, or on top left it says sports, but fourth one down is your prop builder, better known as the sweet shop because we are kids in the candy store. Let's move on to game number two. There may be trouble ahead. Spurs, minus 460 on the back of their worst performance of the season, bar none. Going to Fulham, getting absolutely toasted, didn't take their chances when they came along and got what they deserved, uh, which was basically a spanking. Luton at plus 900, don't care, home or away, they give it their all. And some days they get rewarded and some days they don't. Uh, plus 625 is for the draw. Don't fancy that, but I'm not sure Tottenham's much value. Minus two at minus one one three. Really, really tricky game. I think Tottenham may well win because they need to. I'd probably look for any time goal scorers rather than go anywhere near the money line, the handicap, or even the draw. Brad Thomas. Yeah, I think if you take any time goal scorers though in this match, you're going to have to parlay it with over one and a half. I think if we look at Son, he's like minus one fifteen. Richarlison's I think minus one oh five. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't think they're going to score. The best position in the Premier League is a forward against Luton so far this season, especially with Oso out. Um, he, he is the physicality in the middle of that defense, and, and he's out with a knee injury, which makes me like both teams to score an over two and a half even more. Why? Because Tottenham already are scoring a ton of goals, especially at home. One of the league leaders in goals, goals, goals scored so far this season. And Luton have allowed four goals in three of their last four matches they're playing. Now, on the other side of the pitch, we talk about Luton Town. They, they score goals. They, Regardless of how bad defensively are, they find a way to find the back of the net. And, oh, yeah, Tottenham, they have not been keeping clean sheets. Both teams to score is hitting in 86% of the home matches uh, for the Spurs here. Uh, what's funny, we should talk about this match. I thought this was a little interesting nugget. Tottenham supporters will turn their backs in the 65th minute. Um, as a way to protest the rise in, in uh, season ticket prices for next season. I, I don't know how that affects the game, but I thought it was pretty interesting. I also added a parlay to my both teams to score, which was Son shot on target. Um, he's taking about three shots per game, uh, hitting the target about 0 .8, 0 .7. But against Luton, that number should be much higher. Um, they're conceding a lot of shots, a lot of shots on target. Here's a little bonus bet. I wanted to talk about this bet really fast. Uh, Pedro Porro. Anytime goal scorer, it's plus 600. You don't have to go crazy on it. The odds are good enough. I saw this nugget. He's taking about 1.8 shots uh, per contest. He'll likely take the, the direct free kicks. So if he's going to take any, shot, any shots. And we know that Luton seems so bad defensively. I think he gets his first goal of the season outside of the cup match. He scored not too long ago in a cup match, and he's going to play the full 90. I think at that price, for a team that very well could score four goals by themselves. It's something that you should consider. i tell you what you do. You consider Son at minus 110 anytime goal scorer because Luton are very square yep. in their back line. They like to have a high line. And how does Son love to duck underneath your fullbacks and in between that gap of centre-half and, uh, and fullback is just like straight line through ball, Mark O'Hare. I'm already envisaging... Uh, Son having a couple of one-on-ones. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a really interesting game. Uh, I think there's a lot of angles that we could be getting on board with here. There's one which I'm going to suggest is one of my favourite plays in the Premier League this season, which is kind of backing and combining two of my favourite markets, backing both teams to score uh, and also both teams to collect at least one card. Uh, so both teams to score is a very short price in this particular fixture for obvious reasons. We've done both of these two teams to death, really, in terms of their goal-related yeah. numbers. Um, but if you include both teams to be carded on top of BTTS, it boosts the price up from a, a quite a, an ugly, unattractive minus money proposition to plus 115, uh, which is, uh, you know, you're not asking for a huge amount more than both sides to oblige. And 
Uh, that's something I'm definitely going to be getting on board of. That's an official play. Spurs have scored an all bar one Premier League game under Postacoglu, you know, firing that blank against Fulham before the break. They have only kept six clean sheets all season. You look at their last 19 games in the league, 16 have seen BTTS. 12 of their 14 home fixtures have seen BTTS. Luton have scored in 25 of 29 since promotion. They failed to score just once since October's international break. However, they've only kept two clean sheets themselves and they have the highest BTDS hit rate in the division with 23 from 29, seeing both sides score. In terms of cards, Spurs have been booked in 89% of the games, Luton in 86%. Spurs have drawn a card from all bar one opponents. Luton have drawn a card from all bar two opponents this season. And in Jared Gillette, we've got a referee here averaging 4.7 cards. So uh, my card spread here is a minimum of three, probably four or more. And if so, both sides should be able to oblige there as well. So that's plus 115. I really like that. I think it gives us a cracking boost on the, the raw both teams to score price. But the other alternative angle, which I'm going to promote here as an official play too, I just think Spurs are too short at minus what, 460 here. And the handicap at minus 2-2 two, two is, is doing a bit of a disservice to Luton. If we expect Luton to score... Then for Luton plus two to lose, you know, Spurs are going to have to score at least three goals, really, uh, or more. So you can push that handicap a slightly bit further and back Luton plus two and a quarter at minus 120, which would have made money in 26 of Luton's last 27 Premier League games. Yeah. So they opened the campaign after promotion with really heavy defeats away at Brighton and Chelsea, which I'm sure we all remember back in August. But since then, they've either won, drawn or lost by a one or two goal margin in every game, bar their trip to Liverpool to face uh, to Anfield to face Liverpool, which is a much more daunting proposition than going away to Tottenham Hotspur. So, and that's largely because they're scoring so often. Uh, and if they do score here and you're on the plus two and a quarter line, Spurs need four goals or more for this bet to lose. Uh, and that's a, a hefty total for anyone in any game in the Premier League. So Spurs have scored four goals or more three times under Postacoglu. They're more than capable of doing so. But I'd rather sort of oppose them scoring that kind of total than, than kind of back it with confidence. So I just think Luton plus two and a quarter does them a little bit of a disservice considering how competitive they have been for, for quite some time now. Forget team A, forget team B. Just on the numbers, four is too high. It doesn't matter who's playing. The amount of times we've seen f over four, I mean, the under four is minus 120. Yeah, they're saying that this pr probably this game ends 3-1. But Luton just keep going. So your 2.25 handicap there for Luton to get something out of the game, they've got to lose by basically three goals, um, which which is crazy, really, when they do keep going. It could be 2-0 down with like 10 minutes, five minutes to go and still uh, score because they're used to being down. They're not they're not phased about being behind in games, so they do keep going. They've got pedigree for scoring in nearly every single game they play, home or away. Let's have a little look at the official picks. Do like Son, though, anytime goal scorer. Both teams to score an over 0.5 cards each is at plus 115. Both teams to score over 2.5. Uh, so that's a classic. And Son to score uh, shot on target at minus 118. The boys are getting a bit creative. They've been off 10 days. Uh, Luton plus 2.25 is minus 120 for Marco here, who's double dipped as well. Let's move on to game number three. OK, listen up here, because this is a mismatch for me. And also, there's a massive gap in prices right across Europe and North America. Because Villa are minus 156. I've seen them as, like, minus 190. Uh, Wolves, plus 381. Draw, plus 335. Under overs at three, at minus 115. I'd like, to, I'd like the Villa uh, team total to have been at two and a half or two. You can push that up because I think they score three. I think it's all one-way traffic. I'm not entertaining. I know it's a massive, massive derby, but Villa pushing for top four. Wolves, average, just average. Not above average, not below average, just average. Villa win this game, Marco, here, and it'll be one of my strongest uh, bets throughout the four leagues this weekend. I don't know what Wolves have done to upset you, Flash, in the last couple of weeks, but I'm sure you've been a They've got a away with murder. <laughs> I watch every game. I watch every game. They get away with murder. Uh, I, um, I'm i definitely not as confident on, on Villa as, as you would be here. If anything, I'd probably be siding more on the Wolves' side. But 
uh, happy to sort of steer clear, really. Wolves have got a surprisingly good record in this rivalry, West Midlands Derby, actually. They've gone to Villa Park and been unbeaten in their last seven trips, uh, which is uh, pretty impressive. They've also won their 11 games since Christmas in the Premier League. And I've said it before uh, on this show, but I'm always much more um, on board with Wolves as big underdogs in these games away from home when they're the expectation is off. I'm much more unsteady back in Wolves when they're at home against the likes of Burnley and Palace and Sheffield United and Luton, where I've seen them cough and sputter many, many times. And I think this match stylistically has similarities between their two fixtures with Tottenham. Uh, both Spurs and Villa play with high lines and look to press. And Wolves have had great joy against Spurs in particular, did the double over them by beating that high line and playing on the counter-attack. And um, I think they'll be kind of quietly confident about this match. But the issue I have with Wolves coming into this game is the injuries. Uh, Huang is still missing. Pedro Neto could be out for the season. Cunha is due back. But um, you know, you kind of want at least two of those three to be available rather than one of the three. So uh, with Cunha not sort of guaranteed to be 100%, that is a, a concern. Um, but yeah, I, I think they can be competitive in this game, more so than the odds suggest, personally. Um, they've only lost by multiple goals five times under Gary O'Neill, only twice has that occurred outside of Molyneux. And for Villa, I just wonder whether they're sort of starting to stutter a little bit and coming into the run-in. I know they've had a heavy campaign with the European commitments too, but they struggle for clean sheets, just two at Villa Park since August. And they're missing the two key cogs in midfield with Kamara and McGinn. And I think there's been signs recently of Emery kind of reaching a little bit, trying to find answers for dropping of performance levels. They've been conceding far too many goals. Against Luton recently, he fielded Tielemans in an advanced role. That didn't work. Then against Spurs, we saw him go over three at the back system, which ceded all control in midfield to Tottenham, and they were dominating that game. And then before the break, uh, they went with two up top for the first time all season, and that didn't work. He had to make changes at West Ham at half-time and kind of scratch a point at the London Stadium. So I think Villa are gettable, um, but obviously he'd be happy to happier backing Wolves where they had a, a kind of full complement of forward players available. So I think their aim will be to be stubborn, to, to frustrate and to be scrappy. And I think they're very good at doing that. So uh, I'm happy to sort of leave the money line and handicaps alone. I'll more than allow you, Flash, to get heavy on Villa. Uh, for me, I'm going to make this the first leg of a, a two-leg parlay, which is to back over three and a half cards. This is a derby. The two teams, more from the Wolves' side, hate each other. Um, Villa have got bigger fish to fry with Birmingham. Wolves normally do with, with West Brom. But with both of their sort of big rivals in the league below, this is a kind of big game for the two teams and two sets of supporters. And Villa have been booked in 90% of the games, Wolves in 96%. Both sides are collecting at least two cautions in over 75% of their Premier League matches. Both sides are averaging well over two and a half cards per game as well. Um, so I'm going to back over three and a half cards here. It's hit in eight of the last ten meetings, league meetings, and three of the last four league meetings in the Premier League have seen a minimum of six cards or more. So uh, expecting fireworks, expecting it to be quite tasty on the pitch and hopefully we get a couple of cards and the second leg will be coming up. Oh, Villa score four for me. More than happy. And you know I don't say things lightly. <laughs> I've got Villa scoring four. I think Villa minus one, plus 106, is the best free hit I'm going to see anywhere in Europe this weekend. Um, and the reasons why, because Wolves... They get they allow teams to get in and behind them, uh, and they've been so so fortunate with uh, picking up results. And now Villa, I think that Villa have every yes, we'd have liked to have had Kamara and McGinn sitting in there, but the pace they've got, the, the players, I just keep seeing Douglas Louise arriving on the penalty spot and scoring at round plus 330. I see Villa scoring four, Brad. <laughs> This game's kind of frustrating because I took two bets at the open and I didn't put them on the sheet because there's no way those lines were going to survive. I took Aston Villa money line. The line's already at minus 156. And I took Ollie Watkins, uh, two shots on target. That's already down to plus 112. So neither numbers exist. I so, But I do, okay, I want to talk about this match, though, um, for anybody who wants to bet it. Um, Flash, you said something that that is the reason why I think Villa gives Wolves a hard time, right? It's okay, Villa's going to play with a high line. It's okay, Villa's going to have a lot of the ball. But when Wolves decides to go forward and try to play on the counter, they allow people, they allow the, 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 the opposition to get behind really frequently, allowing guys like, I don't care if they start Diaby, I don't care if they start, who they start and compare, uh, pairing with Ollie Watkins, they get behind, give them clear goal-scoring opportunities here. Um, it's, 
a good time to be playing Wolves if you're Aston Villa because you went, what, 10, 11 matches unbeaten at home, and then you kind of had that, that, that flutter when you played Tottenham United and Newcastle, and it just kind of all went out the window. Then you get international break. Now you play a Wolves team who I think is flirting closer to the bottom half than they are the top, even though they're ninth on the table right now. It's a good, good spot for Aston Villa. I, I'm, I'm, I have Wolves projected. I, I did my projected shot numbers um, with, with Neto, Wang, and then Cunha probably not going to play. I saw that they said he might play for 30, but it, uh, the manager didn't sound too confident that he's if he starts he might only, if he plays he might only play a little bit. I had their shot projection at 7.8 shots in this match, so that means they would have to have really good quality to score enough to win in this match off seven shots, probably one or two on target. So for me, it was Aston Villa money line. Uh, I got it at minus 140. Um, but I, I'm not playing minus 156, so I didn't make an official play. If you are interested, just take the free hit. Um, if you push, fine. Um, Ollie Watkins, if you find a fair line, I think his two shots on target fair line would probably be close to minus 130. I mean, plus 130. I got plus 145. So those numbers are gone, but good parlay pieces if you want. OK, let's not waffle on. Let's get to the official picks because we've got the first day of MLB today as well. That's Major League Baseball. 160 games time. We'll know where we're at. That's unbelievable. It's day in, day out. What a job their boys have got. OK, over three and a half cards. First leg of the parlay for Marco here. For me, Villa, minus one, plus 106. Think they hit four. More than happy if you want to put uh, Villa as a first leg parlay. Uh, minus 156. Brad has left it alone. Let's move on. Let's liven up. Come on. I'm raring to go. Brentford plus 202. Man United plus 120. Tells you straight away that the over three goals at minus 117. I don't fancy United. I don't fancy Brentford. But I don't fancy clean sheets even more. Draw plus 283. Man United at minus 119 to score twice. Brentford to score twice, plus 114. Tony, anytime goal scorer. Brad, fire away here because Bradford Man United just looks like goals. And I don't know who, uh, who wins. Yeah, I would suggest goals, goals, goals here. Um, over two and a half goals hit in 86% of Brentford's home matches, 57 of United's away matches. But more importantly, um, the defensive injuries just keep piling up for United. Now Harry Maguire probably not going to play. Casemiro may be out, um, which just adds to the slew of control. Um, and we know about this Brentford side. They're scoring goals. Uh, they're conceding goals, conceding almost two goals per contest at home. In Brentford matches so far this season, they're – they're seeing 3.28 goals per contest. Five of the five of the last six matches Brentford played have seen at least three goals. So if you like goals, this is the match for you. Um, United, even with uh, a healthy lineup, they're they're averaging about 1.84 xga on the road. Ten Hag probably will be the first manager to tell you that. They struggle defensively away from home, and I think that's because stylistically, tactically, they are not good at transitioning, um, transitioning uh, uh, against a team that's going to play on the front fit or away or, or away from home. So for me, I left it alone. But this is a very goal forward match. Reason I left it alone is because I think it could land on three. Um, so you'd have to play it a little bit more creative, like both teams are scoring over two and a half or something. But uh, either way, you should see some live opportunities in this match. Yeah, Brentford scored twice at plus 114. Looks like a, a, a way to go. Uh, Marco, here, I, I, again, you, I try to visualise games the way they're going to be. I think Brentford might be too aggressive for this lot, you know. And the plus 202, the minus 140 double chance, and Brentford to score twice. I say it again, plus 114. Yeah, I, I really, really, really wanted to be with Brentford in this game and try and sort of select them as an official pick there, whether it's a kind of plus half goal start or you get inventive and about the double chance alongside something goals based. But um, I've left it alone just because of the injuries Brentford have at the minute. And um, that's been a, an issue, a constant throughout the season, but more so the individuals missing in defensive areas coming into this game. So we know Reguilón is suspended after his red card before the international break. Christian Norgard, the captain, the, the central midfielder, is injured. Ben Mee is injured as well. Uh, Ethan Pinnock could be out. He's a he's a doubt still as well. So the big players, we already know that Rico Henry is is out as well. So they've got issues down the left side. Um, forward in the forward areas, there, they've got a full complement, though, with Ty, Tony Visser and and um, who am I missing? Um, 
I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> you, can you, well, you can have but, your pick, really. You've got more pay can come on. You've got, obviously, uh, and Blumo is not, he's not back Blumo, yet. Blumo, that's it. Blumo is, is back. Is he back? Yes. He's oh, back. my yes. God. Yes. Oh, that yes. 202 of Brentford, look, that, that plus 114 for them score twice. The long throws into the box, the flick-ons. Man United are way for thin in heart, strength and keeping clean. Oh, listen, Brentford, they're sucking <laughs> me in. They're sucking me in, Marco, here. I am, the, the only thing that held me off is just Brentford. They've lost 14 of the last 18 Premier League games. But they've so. been competitive <laughs> in all of them, though. <laughs> they have, and that's what my next point was, is if you look beyond the results... The yeah. performance levels have been good. They required Arsenal required a very late goal to beat them at the Emirates. I thought they were excellent in the second half at home to Chelsea not long ago. And then they put up a really decent fight away at Man City in a one 0 loss. That's all happened in the last six weeks. And um, you know they've given most of the big boys a good workout despite the results at the GTEC Stadium this season too. So you know I've been against Man United. Feeling it feels like every single week on this show, yeah. uh, sometimes right, sometimes wrong. Um, but I still have my doubts over this team. Like the results have improved this calendar year, but the performance levels remain unconvincing. They remain chaotic. Even the win against Liverpool in the FA Cup, chaotic. And if you look at their Premier League victories, they've won 15 games, but 12 of those have been by exactly one goal margins. So they've been so fortunate to get the rub of the green. Uh, you know, if you look at the balance of play, the underlying metrics, even with our own eyes, they've overperformed in terms of the league position this season. So I'm, I'm quite keen to oppose them when I can. But those injuries to Brentford put me off. And I just think of United's trips. They have got a good record at the bottom half, especially. But look at some of their games away against the, the bottom half scrappers. The trips to Luton, Sheffield United, Burnley, uh, Forest, Everton. None of those were convincing whatsoever. They lost at Forest. And the 3-0 win at Everton was nowhere near a 3-0 game either. So, again, coming off an international break, this is the Saturday night fixture it's an awkward game, a tricky game. It's a big, big come down from a, an FA Cup tie when you've just beaten Liverpool, your big rivals, in extra time in the last minute. You know, you, you would want that momentum to sort of carry on, but the international break has killed that. And then you're going away to Brentford. You need to kind of get yourself up for that game. And I think there is an opportunity for Brentford to bloody their nose a little bit. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll cheer you on, Flash. Um, and I'll be absolutely gutted if Brentford win and I'm not <laughs> on board this week with, with opposing United. I tell you another way to play it is Brentford double chance, Villa money line in a parlay. It looks really good. I just think that Man United's kryptonite is raw power, pace, strength. Brentford tick them boxes, whoever plays. Again, they put the ball in, they suck you in. Man United haven't got athletic recovery players. So I see Brentford bearing down on this Man United goal. Um, OK, let's have a little look at the official picks. I think you've got to be with the home side in one way, shape or form. But I've gone with both teams scoring over two and a half at minus 135. But the minus 135 is not really a flash man uh, price. But I do like Brentford to score twice at minus uh, one, one, plus 114. OK, move on. I said no waffling and then we start waffling. Liverpool, Brighton. Liverpool, I think, could score five. Brighton, I'm not sure about. So the minus 275, that's a lovely parlay piece. I'm just going to put that down for the inheritance bet this weekend. Minus one and a half at minus 105 for Liverpool. That's another inheritance parlay piece. Uh, over two and a half goals at minus one. To, there's another one. Uh, Marco here, Liverpool, Brighton, Liverpool. How many did they score? I think they, st they score at least three. That means the minus one and a half should be a banker. Yeah, I like Liverpool in this game. It's the second leg of my parlay alongside over three and a half cards at Villa Wolves. I'm going to back Liverpool to win this game. Uh, my minus 275 is more than good enough for me. Um, we're expecting Darwin Nunes and Curtis Jones to be back this weekend. Still no Alisson, but Keller has been excellent in his absence. I know Andy Robertson picked up an injury with Scotland in midweek, but um, uh, and many of their players will be away in international duty, so it might be a lineup check. But I think. This game taking place on Sunday gives those players an opportunity to rest, recover and get going again. And, you know, Brighton have been a thorn in Liverpool's side in recent seasons, uh, particularly with De Zerbi in charge. And there is an expectation by the market that this match kind of escalates into a bit of a shootout. But, um, yeah, I, I'm not quite sure on Brighton at the minute. Uh, I'm not quite sure where they are in the terms of their headspace. They're out of Europe. They're kind of in mid-table, mid no-man's land now. Um, the win against Forest before the break was was OK, nothing particularly special, but they've not backed up with back-to-back -back wins in the league since uh, September. And their record against the top 10 doesn't fill you with confidence. Eight defeats in the last 11. Still no Matoma, no March. I think those two players are, are very critical to what they do in forward areas. And 
I think back to sort of December time when Brighton went away to Arsenal and were totally shut up um, in that game. They barely had a shot or even a touch in the Arsenal box, really, at the Emirates. And that kind of started a bit of a malaise for Brighton in forward areas. So I looked at the last 12 games in the Premier League. 14 teams have generated a higher non-penalty expected goals average from Brighton. And I looked at the last 13 Premier League games. They scored zero or one goal on 10 of occasions in that 13-game sample. And they've been blanked on five occasions, four of which came away from home. And I looked at their goal output away since mid-December. Mid it reads 0 one zero zero one five zero. the five being Sheffield United, which doesn't really count. So exclude the worst team in the division. And they've scored two away goals in the last six away games, one of which was a penalty. Um, so I'm not convinced that they can play their part in a real high-scoring encounter here. I think Liverpool will just be too strong for them. They probably will score two or three goals uh, and win the fixture uh, without Brighton needing to contribute. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep it pretty uncomplicated and make Liverpool the second leg of my parlay with Liverpool just to win. Yeah, Liverpool minus 275. Why are they not minus 450, Brad? Uh, Brighton are all over the shop. Liverpool are as hungry... Maybe there's not a hungrier side in the whole of the Premier League. And I would have them down as being second favourites if they was in the Champions League. There is a massive gulf. I'm not a Liverpool fan, but I am a fan of a team who are hungry, scoring goals and seem to have the bit between their teeth. Yeah, the only reason it's not a higher number is because Brighton have had success against Liverpool recently. But I don't agree with that. I don't think they have success in this match. Um, there was a couple things that were cause for concerns for me against Brighton. Number one was that match when they played against Arsenal. Arsenal uh, stylistically uh, was a tough matchup playing away, right? I think this is going to be another stylistic nightmare for Brighton playing away, especially without the creativity of Matoma, especially out with without uh, Jao Pedro stretching the pitch on the left hand side, and then Marsh, who's who's another creative player who's, who who gives them more of an attacking threat. So for me, Liverpool are already only allowing uh, 9.8 shots per contest uh, at Anfield. Where do how do Brighton how do Brighton break down Liverpool? How do Brighton get in the final third, the attacking third of uh, Liverpool? I don't think that happens. Then you have a Liverpool side who at at Anfield dominate possession. They dominate shots over 18 shots per home contest, and they're going to be aggressive because they know this. They need three points out of this match. Getting three points in this match is absolutely important and a must for their title hopes and for me that translates to aggression early on a lot of shots being put up and oh yeah Mohamed Salah's back which is even more of someone who is going to use pace and drive towards the back line defenders so that led me to Liverpool minus 2.75 corners yes Liverpool lost the corner count against Brighton in that first match, but we have to remember in the reverse fixture. Is that uh, first half, Brad, or just minus 1.75 corners? Excuse me? Minor, is that first half, the corner handicap? Full game, minus 2.75. So basically minus three. Minus three, yeah. You play minus three as well. Um, uh, but in that first match, Brighton had something like 15, 16 shots. It was a totally different back-and-forth match. This one's going to yeah. be dominated uh, with Liverpool in possession. And if you want to talk about how often this number is hit, um, 10 out of 13 home matches so far this season. The ones they didn't hit were met, were, were against teams who control possession pretty well um, and got a lot of shots up uh, in comparison to the other opponents. Another bet that I want to just kind of touch on, if Nunez is a no-go or doesn't start, look at Luis Diaz three-plus shots. Um, I would wait, lineup check. Luis Diaz has hit this in every match where Nunez hasn't started and Diaz has started. So, that's just another little sprinkle there. But I think Liverpool win this handedly. But my favorite bet is absolutely the corner spread. I tell you what, you, I would be here all day. I told you not to waffle on. But I could go on and on and on about this game, all being about Liverpool. Yeah. Minus 275, I can't believe the value. OK, yeah. you stick that in any parlay, and I fancy that's a tick. I think they win by two clear goals, and you're getting minus 105. I think they score three, so you're getting minus 110. It's all about that home side. And the biggest one that none of us have even mentioned, but I will, because I am the expert, is the extra point for goal difference. They are not going to stop. They need to smash these um, because, again, the momentum is with them. They will keep going forward. And I wouldn't be surprised if Brighton don't score. 
And that's a plus 174. I was looking at them thinking, I can see this being four or five nil, but I'm just going to simplify it. Uh, official picks, please, because we've got Liverpool money line is the second leg of that parlay. Liverpool minus one and a half at minus 105, close to being a banker. Liverpool minus 2.75 corners at minus 115 over the full game. Any double dipping going on? No double dipping. Let's go to the biggest game in Europe. This weekend, Man City versus Arsenal. Man City minus 114. Could have got minus 104 three days ago. Arsenal plus 305. Uh, the draw is at plus 292. It's all about Man City for me. Um, do we see three goals though? Because sometimes he's a tight and cagey. But I'm thinking with the uh, attacking flair that's on show here, Brad. I'm going to come to you first. I've got to go Man City, don't complicate it. They get the job done. And if they don't, then I tell you what, I'll just be happy to take my hat off to Arsenal. But I won't even be wearing a hat. It's Man City all the way. Yeah, when this line opened up, I could not believe the price. I ran to the window and bet minus 105. Uh, I bet minus 102. Um, and then I think when I gave the pick, I was minus 105. It was literally lasted like 30 seconds. But... If we recall, back when these teams first played in the reverse fixture, it was City were, were horrible, right? Only three shots in that match. Haaland um, didn't turn up. I didn't no. even know if he was didn't even know he was on the pitch. Nope. And now but that just made me feel like it was one of those matches where City were trying to just, you know, get out with that one point, contain as much as possible, and then go to the Etihad and 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 pick up their three points here. For me, I think City control the possession. They control the shots. And more importantly, the difference maker for Arsenal could not be in this match. I just checked again at um, at 9 this morning. I still didn't get a positive update on Bukaya Saka for, for Arsenal. Without Saka, that are automatically makes me not want to take them. He's their leading goal scorer. Um, I believe leading assist, uh, uh, leading assister as well on the team. Martinelli probably not going to be in this match. It's going to be, it's going to be tough, you know, without uh, De Bruyne if he doesn't play for for Manchester City. But there's one important cog who is the absolute difference maker in this match, and that's Rodri. Rodri holding it down in the middle of the park is going to be the difference in them winning or or Arsenal escaping with a draw. And I like Manchester City. I I met like Manchester City. I'll put it this way: I bet them three different times in three different occasions. Um, so I still am okay with the minus 114 money line play. The, the, listen, that's the biggest one. Man City, minus 114, 115 at home, regardless. They are the best side in Europe. Then you throw in they're at home. They throw in their must win. Mark O'Hare, I think it's don't complicate it, Man City. That's it. Yeah, um, I, I'm not involved in this game. Um just because I absolutely see where your buyers are coming from. And, and to be honest, when I did see the prices originally, uh, I thought, well, that's an automatic bet to back City at that kind of price. We don't get it often. I looked at the prices and, and historic prices. And since 2018-19 in the Premier League at the Etihad, City have gone off around this kind of price just five times. It's the first time this season they've been around this price in the Premier League. It's the biggest price they've been this season at home. Uh, last season, they were close to evens at home to Liverpool. That was the biggest price they were. But uh, they're not often available around this kind of price. And I wondered why that might be. So I did some digging. And actually, their record against the top teams in the Premier League this season has been pretty middling at best, really. Um, the winless against the top five, three draws and two defeats. If you look at their home and away record against the top 11, six wins, five draws, three defeats. There's been quite a lot of draws and they're big games that matter, really. And um, I wonder whether the draw has been underpriced here at, at plus 292, kind of suggesting that it hits you know, 25% of the time. And what we've seen this year, I believe, is an increase in the draws, especially between the breakaway top three, because these match the magnitude of these matches are so enormous. I'm not saying there's a fear factor of losing, but uh, we, you know, we didn't definitely didn't see that at Anfield when City played Liverpool. But I think both sides will be well aware of the consequences of losing that match rather than, you know, the benefits of winning it. So, um, yeah, I would want to keep the draw on side in, in whatever way I wanted to play this game. And um, again, just going back to, to City and, and, and their price, and I wondered why that might be. I looked at all the underlying metrics available to us and Arsenal have been quite considerably the best team in the Premier League this year in terms of expected points, expected goals, shots in the box, big chances created. So they do command respect. And 
I thought they were brilliant in the reverse game uh, at the Emirates. I thought they stifled City brilliantly. I know there wasn't any Rodri that day and City didn't really turn up. Well, and, and Brad's absolutely right. But <laughs> yeah, but I just think Saka, Martinelli, Gabriel, I expect all three of them to feature from the off here. Um, and I think they're growing in confidence since last playing City and last season's meetings with City. I think they are making those incremental improvements. And from a Man City perspective, we've been talking now for, for weeks, really, that City come into their own around January, February, March time with the, you know, they start to, to hit their straps, really, and we see the best of them. I'm still sort of waiting to see that. And, you know, I look at their most recent games at the Etihad. I'm thinking the Chelsea game, Everton, Brentford, not as impressed as perhaps I really should be by City at this stage of the season, where, you know, even the game against Man United and the Derby, I think there were stages of that match where you're thinking... Come on, City. I, I expect more from you. I expect better. I've got such high expectations that you've not quite met them yet this season. And this might be the game where they turn out and, and sort of put on a show and show us what they're all capable of. But um, I just want to respect Arsenal a little bit more than perhaps I have done in previous years because I do think they are closing the gap slightly on the best teams in the league. And um, for that reason, I'm just going to leave it alone and, and try and cheer on and, and enjoy the match. But um, I'm happily to sort of cheer both of you on because I know exactly what you're you're talking about. And uh, as I say, originally, when I looked at this looked at this game, I almost made City an automatic bet at that price. But just a couple of um, couple of concerns, really, which I, I want to sort of iron out. And perhaps there will be this weekend if, if City do demolish Arsenal quite comfortably. Yeah, listen, uh, th that's it. That, that's the big one. You basically give Arsenal respect by leaving the game alone. It is a line-up check, though, because nearly every single player and most of the crowd were involved in international duty this week in this game as well. So just have a quick look. And, um, uh, Brad, when you talk about influential players for Arsenal, I don't think there's more, anyone more influential than Odegaard, but Saliba and Gabriel will be tested like they've never been tested yep. so far this season. Man City, an over one and a half, plus 110. For the greedy presenter, uh, Man City money line at minus one one four. Let's uh, listen. There will be a Q and A, but listen, don't be asking me nothing, right? Because I'm also going to ask you to subscribe and also ring the bell. Look at a producer trying to wrap me up. Um, but please, if you like your odds, your props, your offers, and your bonuses, then type in betustv.com forward slash odds. Do not forget, please, though, to ring that bell, which means I'll notify you and you'll never miss any content. Again, uh, questions. We haven't really got time for questions, to be honest, because I'm being wrapped up. Because it's MLB, because it's the first day of the season. So let's have a little look at the official picks. Forest Palace, both seem to score. Minus 118. Forest Palace, Eze, over one and a half shots and over 0.5 shots on target. At minus 110, Spurs, Luton, both teams to score and over 0.5 cards each is plus 115. Luton, plus 2.25, minus 120. And the parlay, Villa Wolves, over three and a half cards and Liverpool, money line is plus 100. Want that bloodbath? Villa Wolves. Wolves have three players sent off and uh, also win by five. For me, Villa, minus one, free hit, plus 106. Brentford, Man United. Both teams scoring over two and a half at minus 135, but I like the Brentford to score twice at plus 114. Liverpool, minus one and a half at minus 105. Now that's not in yellow. is because I didn't actually press the button. But Man City and over one and a half, plus 110, is my banker. Forest. Palace, both teams to score, minus 118. Spurs, Luton, both teams to score, and over two and a half. And Son, shot on target at minus 118. Boys getting creative. Liverpool, minus 2.75 corners at minus 115. And Man City, money line, minus 114 for Brad. If they're going to win, I fancy they're going to need to score twice. Mark O'Hare, Brad, have a great weekend. We will see you Monday, 1 o'clock Eastern for the Tuesday, Wednesday. Full card for everyone in the chat, please. Um, thumbs up on the way out and don't forget we've got Sierra A today and La Liga Bundesliga tomorrow but from Mark from Brad from myself enjoy day one of MLB from BetUS you take care we hope you enjoyed the show if you did hit the like subscribe and ring the bell and we will notify you and you'll never miss a show again for all of the sports content here at BetUS then type in betustv.com Let's cash together.